artificial intelligence will surpass all human limitations and doom us so that we won't be able to have any jobs we won't be able to work anymore and anything that comes from humans won't be valuable is that true though come with me and today we'll talk about this and discover as you can see around me i am in a place full of bone size bone size for those who don't know are those little miniature plants from japan and china and they developed this this type of culture of the vegetation so that you make miniatures of trees for instance so we have these trees that are supposed to be gigantic so for instance we have over here a sequoia i'll show it to you so this one is supposed to be a sequoia And sequoias are huge ass trees that the tallest trees that we know of that are alive today are sequoias. And then we have some other gigantic trees as well. For instance, no, not this one. This is um, Indian nuts, Castanha da India. We also have this beautiful. I know it's from Lebanon, but I'm not sure how to say this in English. Anyways, the thing is, this is an exposition by an artist. He's called Mauricio Aleu Ara. He's here from Chile. And this exposition of bonsai lies in a very famous artisan market here in Saint Santo Domingos or Los Dominicos a monastery here in Chile in Santiago and here we have a very interesting market full of things that are and here we have a very interesting market full of craftsmanship, things that were done by actual artists, by actual craftsmen and women. And we have a little bit of everything here and I'll show it to you. And this is one of the key things that I wanna talk about in this video, really. It's how we may think that AI will take over everything and it's easy to think that way today since we are living in a society that's obsessed with the new new is always better like Barney Stinson used to say but in all realness there are many things that are subject to the Lindy effect and for those of you who don't know the Lindy effect was coined by a journalist in New York in the 60s or 70s and the Lindy Cafe the Lindy Delicatessen was a place where comedians went after they had their shows in Broadway and they'd go to eat to have a drink afterwards in the Lindy Deli and it was a deli that was open had been open for over 50 years at the time they coined us so the term Lindy effect means the longer that something has been around, the longer that something has been relevant, the longer that it will continue being relevant. So for instance, the difference between something like wine or beer or anything that's traditional in the sense that people have been drinking and eating them for hundreds or thousands of years, these things tend to survive for much longer periods of time. Whereas on the contrary, things that are new, they haven't proved themselves yet. So we don't know if they will survive and they might, but we don't know. So if, if you think about, will people drink wine a thousand years from now, considering that 
people are still here and that we still have a civilization by then yeah probably there's a very big chance because wine has been around for thousands of years but if we ask will people be eating these concoctions that they say are are the same thing as a hamburger i don't think so probably not maybe maybe not will people be eating meat i strongly think that yes people will still be eating meat and there may be some pressing in culture some pressing trying to use um, environmental issues as as a reason to try to change how people eat how people think how people live but i don't think that in the long term that will pan out as beautifully as it as people like to seem as people like to think of and going back to the artisan crafts here in this market it's it's surprising how many amazing things there are and if you think that things like crafts like these in bone size or like this little waterfall or crafts made with wood musical instruments um, fabric crafts how they have survived throughout the centuries throughout the millennia and they are still used for instance these are typical garments for a Chilean cowboy these are some other crafts as well this is actually kind of a, an exposure an exposition of some of the crafts that are available here in this market there are dozens maybe a hundred little stores that sell pretty much everything so here we have some wood crafting this very cool whale probably made of copper no it says it's made of wood but i think it has some copper in it and this is a thing that i really liked about chile really they they're really adamant about their art they really like it they really love drawing on walls and have a lot of colorful things that they do so check this out so there's this wooden mask and there's this beautiful, beautiful, I don't know how it's called, but it's made of some kind of thread. And these things have been around for hundreds of years. Check this out. Like really, it's supposed to be like an Egyptian craft. So there's like an eagle and a snake. These things have been around for hundreds of years. These things, people have thought of them as valuable for hundreds of years. And the thing is, when we have AI, when we have the possibility of creating things at the click of a button or at an example of a finger, we may tend to think that the human element will be less important. But here's the thing. I think quite the contrary. The human element will be ever more important because if anyone can do something, of course, you open up a million possibilities and that's awesome. But the craftsmanship, at the end of the day, the creator side comes from the human. That creative element that you may argue God-given inspiration that only us humans have or can have has to come from the human after all and I am sure that technology will help us do amazing things and I use it I abuse it sometimes and I'm sure that people will continue using and abusing it. 
but it might become so commoditized if anyone with a click of a button can write a whole book or make a whole mu movie of course it's awesome that people can have it's more democratic in a sense if things go right which is also something that we need to be very careful i think we are on the crossroads between a world in which artificial intelligence and technology can be something that kind of frees us and lets us live in this utopia it might be but i'm actually kind of a doomer in this sense because we probably might end up in a cyberpunk sort of world in which it gets even worse that even less people control even more of the natural resources and of the things that go on in politics and everything but anyways i hope not i hope that you guys are watching this and you are aware of the dangers of ai as well as the the possibilities and the things that we can do with it that are awesome but please be aware of the dangers and be aware that at the end of the day the human element will still be very important at the end of the day what we value ends up being important for instance you guys might have known of some many many crazy stories of bubbles that come around so what's a bubble a bubble is when there's a product and we have a lot of demand for the product and that supply can can cover that demand but it's uh it's artificially inflated in a sense so people start buying because they believe that the price will go up 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 and it will never stop but eventually the price corrects so in the long run prices tend to correct themselves so that's kind of in a nutshell the theory of value the theory of of markets and free markets kind of stuff but like in the short run things can be completely over or undervalued but in the long run they tend to correct because people eventually see that they're being bullshitted <laughs> and there was this this fascinating um, bubble that was the first one that was recorded it that was the fever of the tulips that happened a few hundred years ago with the Dutch. So the Dutch started loving their tulips so much. They wanted to sell tulips and the market became so crazy that tulips were worth so much. Like tulips were worth, a tulip could be worth a house for instance. And that's completely crazy. That's complete bullshit if you think about it today. But that's how bubbles work. People go crazy about the stupidest things and they just notice it later on or or many times they're just a bit gullible or a bit they want to make a quick buck and they think that it won't stop going up. And that's when they lose a lot of money and that happens with stocks, that happens with Bitcoin, that happens with anything really and it has happened and will happen for the foreseeable future as long as we're human. We will have this little intention of getting richer, of getting more power, and that leads us to do the most ridiculous things. But going back to will AI steal our, our jobs and steal everything from us and take over completely? It might, but it won't if we don't let it. And the thing is, I argue that things like this, things like actually being able to speak another language, 
actually being able to play an instrument, actually being able to wove a fabric or to make some um, woodcraft workshopping, these things will be ever more valuable because we already see this with many blue collar jobs or oh, I forgot it, the term in English that people use. But you know, people like um, plumbers, electricians, their rates have been going up because not so many people wanted to do those jobs in the last few decades. So not so many people learned those trades. However, while everyone was getting their underwater basket weaving, woodcrafting, um, social studies, whatever degrees, and thinking that they were entitled to get a $200,000 job, a year job after they graduated, well, they are in for a very big deception, aren't they? And on the other side, the people that went into plumbing, to electricians or welders, things that will continue to be needed for the foreseeable future, unless we really get real good robots with manual things that is very far away from what we can do still. And so the supply of these workers fell and the demand is still there or the demand is even higher so naturally the price that they can charge is higher and so many of these people these blue color workers that some white color workers think that they're superior to them in a way because they're more intellectual many of these people are actually making much more than the white color workers or the white color wannabes because <laughs> Let's face it, there are a lot of white color wannabes today because there are simply not enough jobs for them, especially because with AI, the easiest thing to automate is actually the things that are deemed intellectual. And all of this to get back to the nutshell that yes, the human factor will actually become even more important in the long run. And we will think that it's even more impressive because since no one will have this willing, no one will be willing to learn Mandarin or to learn another language, to learn how to do things with their hands, they will think, oh, just let it to the robots. And what happens if, for instance, it happens already all the time, what happens if you need to go somewhere and your phone doesn't work, Google Maps doesn't work, Waze doesn't work, whatever thing you do doesn't work, what happens? Do you get lost? And then you don't even know how to ask someone for help. If they tell you to go straight ahead for 500 meters and then turn right and then turn left after another two blocks, you will forget it because you're a fucking moron because you rely too much in technology. Heads up, man, heads up. You can't rely too much on technology because technology fails all the time. It may be the battery, it may be a lack of electricity, it may be because you sprinkled some water, but technology fails all the time. And when it fails, when we actually need someone to do things and because the technology isn't working, who will do this? the few that actually took the time to learn. So this has to do with everything. It has to do with knowing how to drive, knowing how to navigate, looking, for instance, at the sun and knowing what's north, what's west, what's east, south. It has to do with being able to cook your own meals. It has to do with being able to plant some of your food at least being more reliable, being more anti-fragile, as Asim Taleb likes to say. And in the long run, especially if we get into some of the doomsday kind of 
cyberpunk, post-apocalyptic society things, you'll need to be able to fear for yourself, for your loved ones. So, this one's been a long one. It's been a while since I haven't done a long one. But this is my answer inspired by this Santo Domingo um, work craftsmanship market about if we should rely that much on our artificial intelligence and the dangers of it and my argument that actually we will value even more the human aspect in the long run so that's it keep rocking keep rolling you guys are awesome